What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the best flunderies, flundering away deck profile. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's a bit over exaggerated. I wouldn't say that this is the best build or the best deck profile. It is still definitely a work in progress, but holy fucking jumping banana balls on Christmas Day. This deck is busted. A lot of people are kind of overhyping it, saying, oh, this deck is tier zero. This deck's going to wreck shit. I wouldn't really say it's tier zero. I would definitely say it's around tier one, maybe tier 0.5. Not quite to tier zero. I think if there's any more support that we get where shit, if they were to get like a negator or just something that said like your opponent just can't special summon, period. I mean, really, if this deck got like a negator, just something that was like, you can banish a Flunderies card or send one to your graveyard to negate the activation of a card and banish it or destroy it, whatever, then yeah, this deck would be tier zero all the way. Um, I have seen a few different builds um, from Lithium, Yaxine656, I think is his username. I apologize, Yaxine, if I butchered that. Um, and I've also looked at uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Tube, who had more of a uh, OTK Turbo version. So I've tried to kind of blend all of those together into one build. Uh, again, this is still a work in progress. I mean, the cards have only been out for, what, like two weeks now? So people are still trying to figure out the best way to break this deck. So, guys, be sure to like the video and favorite and all that. Be sure to hit that bell. We're going to be bringing back daily uploads here uh, very soon. I have a feeling that events are going to be coming back soon. But anyway, let's go ahead and dive into the deck profile. We are playing only one copy of Flundery Snell. This is the one that lets you normal summon or set three times, not just once. It has the quick effect. You can banish a card from your hand, change all opponent special soul summon monsters to face down defense this card is good um the issue with it though is that it doesn't extend your plays during the opponent's turn you know if the normal summon ability was a quick effect then yeah that'd be busted because you could just use it immediately normal summon again and continue your plays um but it's something more for like if you kind of open up with kind of a weird hand where you can drop out the snow, use the effect of normal summon three times, and also end on the end pin, then yeah, it's pretty good. Other than that, it's sort of more of an interrupt that the opponent can easily get around with like a dark hole or a dark ruler no more, or something like that. We're playing two copies of the end pin, or as I like to call it, Emperor Penguin. This card is freaking busted. Uh, you're typically going to go for this uh, first turn. You're going to drop out, you know, Robina. Uh, Eaglin to search it and then drop out the end pin, get like the normal traps that you can play during the opponent's turn, and then if you have the statue, then you'll normal summon the statue off the Emperor Penguin's effect. Uh, then we're also playing one copy of Ryza. I've been really tempted to bump this up to two. I almost want to take out the Snow for a second copy, just because once you lose that one copy, especially late in the game when you want to start bouncing shit back to the opponent, um, it can really come in handy. Um, we were playing two Snow, and then I took out one copy for a Dark Cymorg. Um, this card has just always been amazing. It's just uh, the fact that you can special summon it out from the grave, which really isn't going to come up in this deck, but just avoid tributing altogether and then be able to not let the opponent set any cards. You can combine that with anti-spell fragrance. Then they can't use any spells or traps. Um, I really like this card, and it's also treated uh, as a wind attribute while face up on the field. So if for whatever reason you tribute it for Ryza, like, if you don't want to tribute two monsters, you can just tribute this for the Ryza and then bounce, you know, two cards, technically three. Um, yeah, it's it's really solid. Uh, one Barrier Statue of the Storm wins. Uh, everybody and their mother's playing this card. I really hope that in future builds this doesn't ever get cut because, depending on your build, it really forces the opponent to go into their battle phase just to swing over this and then go to main phase two and attempt to build a board while you still probably have an Emperor Penguin on the field. So... Uh, people have made arguments where you can maybe cut this card and play something else. Um, at the same time, you know, I like having it because, again, it makes pretty much makes the opponent skip their battle phase. Or if you want to be that one guy in the room who's playing Terminal World that doesn't allow either player to have a main phase two, um, then, you know, you can pretty much play this out with Terminal World and then the opponent's forced to pretty much pass their turn. Then we're playing three Ash Blossom, uh, two Eaglin, two Stritch, three Robina, and two Toucan. I really go back and forth on some of these ratios. Some people say only play one, some people play two, um, some people only play one Stritch, which I can see why, because it's really not one of the best. And Robina is just your Stratos of the deck. Um, I feel that this ratio is fine. 
Like there really hasn't been a whole lot of times where I've needed multiples in a duel, but it's also good like if you need that search off of the Robina to continue your normal summon combos. Um, so that really does help a lot. We're playing three copies of Wing Requital. I know a lot of people are kind of back and forth on this card because if you play extra, then you can't play the Requital until the next turn. Um, I like using Requital as like a follow-up. So like you use extra, you get your combos going, you establish your board. Next turn, let's say you draw into, I don't know, an Ash Blossom. You use the Requital to draw into two more cards just to really solidify that you're going to win the game. We got Triple Prosperity, a uh, Double Duality. And I actually took out Where Arf Thou and Terraforming that Lithium had in his deck for one Dimensional Fissure and one Macro. So we're playing one of that. And then three of the Unknown Win. This card's kind of conflicting. I still don't know how I feel about this card. Uh, and then we're playing three Mysterious Map, two of the City of Dreams, two of the Scary Sea, and we already mentioned the uh, Macro. I would say overall, the cards that are still in testing is the D Fissure and the Macro, the Wing Requital, the three Unknown Win, and some people play like two to three of the, the map. I personally like three just because of the fact it, in a way, acts like another Flunderies low-level monster. Because if the opponent has something like Ash, you can activate the map. Let's say target the Robina, banish Toucan, you summon out the Robina off the map. You still have your regular normal summon. Um, this is just an additional normal summon. You can use the Robina on Chainlink 1, use the Toucan on Chainlink 2. Now they can't Ash you. Uh, and then you can bring out Eaglin, Eaglin uh, can search, uh, things like that. You know, um, it's it, obviously they can still ash you at this point, so it really depends on what else you have in your hand. But even if they ash you at this point, you still have your normal, your regular normal summon, I should say, um, after using the map. The extra deck is kind of just whatever, it's just things I'm testing. I really like Anima in the extra deck, um, it's actually come in handy because, you know, the opponent might get lazy and play something. Uh, by where an extra monster zone is, and then you can just say, okay, I'm going to swipe that up. I like Cymorg in theory, because you can drop it out and then just bring out the Barrier Statue Storm. Um, but again, it's just sort of in testing, um, so you can play whatever you want in the extra deck. Um, the side deck is just pretty much things I'm testing for going second. Um, I feel like the cards that are most necessary right now is Triple Nibiru, Triple Droll, Triple Lightning Storm, and Triple Evenly Match. Last three cards can really be whatever you want, but I am testing Harpy's Feather Storm. Uh, so it's effective that if you control a Wind Wing Beast monster, which you obviously will, until the end of this turn, negate any monster effects your opponent activates. If you control a Harpy monster, you can activate this card from your hand. If this card's in its own spell and trap is not destroyed by opponent's card effect, you get out of Harpy's Feather Duster from your deck to your hand, which is cute, I guess. I mean, that's never really going to come up. But it's the fact that it's pretty much a trap traps none for monster effects, you know, um, I was previously playing Imperm and I ended up cutting it, uh, but if you wanted to like side deck this in, if you know the opponent's playing a lot of monster effects, you could take out like all three copies of your uh, wing requital, throw in three feather storm, and then if you open with it, you know, you set up your board, you set this, the moment the opponent starts their turn, like you can just go standby phase, shotgun the feather storm, now they can't activate any monster effects, you just dark ruler no more them for their entire turn. And then you have this big ass emperor penguin ready to, you know, wreck your shit. And then if you have the normal trap set, like it's just GG from there. You can get the storm winds, lock them out of special summoning, they can't use any monster effects, like you just, you just lock them down. Um, to show... Or to, to give you perspective, I should say, on how, um, uh, not broken, but how resilient this deck is. I just played against an Altergeist guy. He activated Torrential on me twice, and we still pushed through in one. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find uh, the replay here. I believe it's this one. Uh, yes, it is, actually. Uh, so we're just going to watch this right quick, and... Uh, you know, this deck is just, for one thing, it's so much fun. Like, it's like playing against prank kids, um, or like playing prank kids, I should say. You have so many plays on the opponent's turn, you can just really troll them into oblivion. Um, and what's nice, too, is that with both this and the field spell, you now technically have two extra normal summons uh, ready to go. See, now now we're just doing prank kids plays. We're just flexing. We're playing during the opponent's turn. Uh, we're getting rid of his shit. Uh, attributed the Empen here because I had the storm winds. I wanted that extra normal summon to lock him down. Um, and as you can see, his back row is really nothing. Um, I didn't know he had the two torrentials, and I actually made the mistake of normal summoning here. But again, even with two torrentials, we still push through and just 
ruined his day um, using the map here to get the Robina banished so that we can chain block. And oh no, he torrential me. Was kind of a dumb play on my part, but we don't care because we're just going to get all of our resources back. We're going to keep on chain blocking. Uh -huh. And I mean, we're, we're, we're doing all these plays during the opponent's turn. It's still his turn, and we're just playing like it's our turn. Using the Ryza to, to bounce shit is always so good. Um, I love using Toucan to get back my Flenderies Emperor Penguin, uh, banishing it off of the Stitch so that you can uh, recruit it from your graveyard. And this deck is definitely very combo-oriented. There's a lot of lines of play, which is why I constantly relate it um, back to um, Prank Kids, because you really need to know how to play this deck. Um, because if, if you're not making the right plays, you're really going to get punished for it. And we're coming up to the point where he's going to rage quit here because he just gets aggravated with me making so many plays during his turn. Uh, we've got our Emperor Penguin right back out. And keep in mind, he already torrentialed us once, and we're already rebuilding our board, still during his turn. And then he just rage quit because he got tired of shit. You know, we had the counter trap set. We had this set. We had another counter trap in our hand. I mean, look at this. Three, four, five, six, seven, seven cards in our hand. We have so many options. And all he's got is a protocol. That, that's all. He, you, you, you can't do shit. You can't do shit. You can't do nothing. Now, I wasn't playing uh, Dark Cymorg in the build at the time. Um, uh, God, I have so many replays here. Um, I'm going to see if I have one more replay that I can show you. Uh, of course, now you're just seeing all of my uh, all of my replays. Well, anyway, I must not have... Uh, or maybe this is the replay. Uh, nope, it's not. <laughs> I thought it was, but uh, I, I guess not. So anyways, guys, that is the deck list. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm going to get back to trolling people on EDO Pro. Um, thank you guys for watching, and subscribe if you have not already.